This is a lab for AZ500 Module 1. We're going to start by creating a AD user by using the Azure portal. So on the left, you can find Azure Active Directory, Users, New Users. Now fill in the username, full name. Uh, Auto-generated password should be copied to a notepad for later use. We're gonna, we are going to create a group now and add the test user to the group. As we're creating a new group, uh, the group type is security to add a security principle and assign permissions. Name of the group, uh, any group de group descriptions. Membership type that can be assigned or dynamically uh, queried. Now with that, you need to activate Azure AD Premium. I'm going to add a user. I forgot to add owner as well. Now owner has permission to manage the membership list. Now we're going to create another group. Junior admin. We're going to create the user uh, through PowerShell this time. We'll click on that. If this is the first time you launch in PowerShell, it might require you to create a storage account. So here, you can switch between PowerShell and Bash. Right, so this is the password we are going to assign to the newly created user. Because we're using Cloud Shell, uh, we need to connect it to Azure AD first. Now this is going to return our verified domain name. So that is our verified domain. This is going to create a new Azure AD user. Now notice we prepared the password profile along with our uh, planned password. Now we're gonna create a group. So now we have two groups, junior admins, senior admins. And let's uh, get a reference to the user we have just created into the variable user. And we're going to call add AZAD group membership. All right. So let's find out if the user is assigned to that group. So it looks like it's a... Uh, and the third exercise, we're going to switch the context to bash. We'll be using az command uh, to perform pretty much the same uh, activity. So this is sign the, uh, this is going to find my username. Find the add sign. and then cut the rest, assign it to the domain names, variable. And this is gonna create a new user. All right. Let's take a look at all the existing user now. So you can see there are four users in our system. Creates a service desk group. Uh, 
confirm that it's created. Now add users to service desk. So to add the users to the group, we need to obtain the user object ID. So use this to obtain the object ID and use ACID group member to add a member to the group. All right, so exercise uh, task exercise four, we're gonna create a resource group and add one of the groups that we created into a RBAC role. All right. So once the row, uh, resource group is created, go to access control. Add. So we're going to select role assignment in this dropdown. The role we would like to assign is called the virtual machine administrator, a uh, contributor, sorry, virtual machine contributor. So here we can take a look if uh, Dylan William will have uh, virtual co machine contributor roles within this resource group. So using the check permission, check access in the access control. So once we're done with that, do a quick cleanup. And that's for the module uh, one lab activity. Now in this uh, lab number two for AZ500, we're gonna create a resource group and then restrict the resource creation to that of South, uh, of UK South, via applying Azure policy. So first we create a resource group through the PowerShell. Now we're gonna go to policies. So at the top, search for policy, Azure policy tab. So the assignment is going to tell us if, if there's any policy that has been assigned already. Now, policy can be assigned to the scope of management group, subscriptions, resource group. So here we're going to add, we're going to use this to find from the built-in policy an allowed location policy. A policy definition contains parameters that must be supplied when the policy is assigned. The rule that evaluates against uh, the template that's submitted or the request that's submitted. So if all of these condition match, uh, uh, matches, for example, location is not in and the location is not part of a global service and it's not a B2C directory, then the effect is to deny this other possible effect may be a, a audit to record that attempt has been made 
deploy if not exist so deploy new resources if they do not exist now in the scope we can select only subscription and the resource group we just create now make sure the policy will take effect once it's applied check the assignment name let's give it a meaningful name here This is the parameter that we're going to assign, and here we are going to find uh, UK South. Now we're going to try to see if the policy will block up the creation. of a resource All right. now an error message should appear that describes uh, either if you have created this policy for a while and the visual uh, the Azure portal uh, had picked up that policy then during the validation it should show you the policy violation now if you just create AZ policy and you go ahead and immediately deploy a resource uh, the portal UI wouldn't have cached the policy so it will, it will submit to the ARM engine and then still get kicked back the deployment failed now it's going to uh, detail this is a lab for AZ 500 uh, it's going to detail the deployment failed due to policy assignment All right, so that's the end of this lab. Remove the resource that we created. This is lab number three. We'll be uh, working on the resource manager locks. Uh, there are two kinds of locks, read-only lock and delete lock. Now we're going to first uh, create a read-only lock on this resource group and demonstrate that once the read-only lock has been placed, no changes can be made to the resource. For instance, you can no longer start or stop a virtual machine, make changes to the settings to the storage account, so on and so forth. So those will all be uh, stopped by that read-only lock. Read-only lock also implies no delete. So once the read-only lock has been placed, you also cannot delete those resources. All right, so let's find the resource group. So we're going to start with a read-only lock. All right. So notice the lock is now placed on the resource group. Okay. It is also possible to place locks in a subscription. So no resource within the subscription can be changed. So here is uh, that storage account that lives within the resource group. Now you can also apply lock to individual resources. Okay, so it depends on where, where you apply the, uh, the lock. You can either lock individual resource, the entire resource group, the entire subscription. Okay. So you can see that from the lock screen that it's inheriting the read-only lock from the scope of resource group. All right, so any further change, such as changing uh, HTTPS requirement, will fail the update due to the resource group lock. All right, so we're going to remove the lock. All right, so notice the scope is at the resource group, so you have to go to the resource group and the locks. Okay. All right, so to the right, scroll to the right, there's a delete button. So now that's rid of the read-only lock. Now we're going to substitute this with a delete 
lock. So I demonstrate that delete lock does allow you to continue make changes to the resources, but simply prevent you from accidentally remove this uh, any resource within the resource group. Right. So subsequently, after the lock is placed, navigate to storage. All right. Now configuration. Changes can now be safely saved. However, attempt to delete this resource has uh, failed, has been blocked by the delete locks. All right. So remember, read-only lock also implies delete lock, which will prevent resource from being deleted.